Hello, you lot. 513600 here. Today, I decided something. Mondays are gonna be chill comp days. Rather than spamming them all out of the place, you know. Really, 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 really. Alright, wait a minute, that's not a fucking. What the fuck am I talking about? We can just do it on Mondays, you know. I just think it's a good way to start the week. Um, I do have some explain videos coming out on there. Sorry if I've never been uploading too much, because, you know, Christmas time, some of the more free uh, pressures behind the scenes. Today I'm going to take a little step back. I'm going to be attempting a free break. Now, this is just going to be my opinion how I will imagine uh, how to train the dragon. So our story begins uh, right after uh, How to Train the Dragon Homecoming, which we don't really need to talk about. Um, we're going to start it off like a bit of like five years later because timings do need to come into these theories. You need to make sure your timings are all correct. Up. Um, we are introduced to Toothless already. And in this, and already he's kind of already going to his little... They're all lovable bastard moments, you know, where he's a bit of a lovable bastard himself. Um, he is just hanging out with Luna. Yes, I'm giving a Light Fury a name, because I... There are millions of people who are actually calling her Luna on the internet. Yes, I don't know why, just do not judge me. Because it's just how I imagine it. I'm not going for the whole crappy love shipping. Um... Then we meet the kids named Dart, Pouncer, and I'm pretty sure the other one is Rough Turner or whatever his name is. Um, apparently, the three, they are, they are kind of fascinated about the whole Viking stuff. Now, for Hiccup, which we see now, he is now in the... Well, he's kind of shaved off his beard because I really do not like him having a beard. I just more prefer him when he doesn't have the beard on. And he is more or less missing toothless because he just needs to... He just fears for his little safety. And he feels like they both need each other and it's definitely what they need. We then cut to a prison, which is where we meet our main villain. And in this storyline, we are going to... Have um, it's gonna be a guy called Shay Patrick Cormac, as he is our, uh, as he's more one of the angered villains we have here. Now, am I going to say he's gonna be as angered as some of the previous Hunter Trigger Dragon villains? Well, no. He's going to be more or less angry as Lord Shen was in Kung Fu Panda 2. Um, apparently, um, uh, we are then intro. He is kind of more talking about why should I? I don't really care. Well, basically, for Shay, he is a bit of his anger. He basically has a hatred to dragons, and one of those things being, he just, well, basically they killed his family while they were trying to take a nice, easy uh, holiday for good reason. And then, um, what they tried to do next was this, 
they try to talk. What they, what Shay is planning is basically, they are, he is planning to break out of prison and, and kill all the dragons that are live, that are still alive, really. Um, we are then quite. He then hears of uh, the hidden world. He's aware it's it's around. He doesn't really know where it is, but he but he definitely has somewhere about to where it could be. At least through his mind, he thinks he knows where it could be. Um, apparently, for Dot, who is one of the kids of Hiccup. She then sneakily goes out of the hidden world without her brothers and her parents knowing. She's like the only girl of the family, really. Like, yeah, like she's the only girl in the family. <laughs> um. Then for um the next part of the story, we are then introduced to. She is apparently bit. He then is awoken by by someone's messages, and he is he's hearing a voice in his head, and it goes by the name, and he's calling it to his. His one and only master. Basically, they are. They basically have someone called. Basically, he's being contacted by the Scarecrow. Sorry if my dialogue is not doing that good. It's just that I. I'm just trying to do good here. So, please. Please try and. And not judge me, like I, my God, I promise you to plan all this out. Um, as for Shay, he then somehow sneakily gets out of prison in a bit of a stealth mode because it is revealed he was once part of a group called Assassins, who are trained killers. Yeah, you probably all know what assassins are. I don't need to go over that bullshit line again. Um. So yeah, he then goes in search of of our heroes as as he wants them dead first because he's aware that he's got to get rid of Vikings. So then we are introduced. So then, as for Dot, she then meets Hiccup. Somehow, Hiccup is a little bit surprised that one of Hiccup, that one of Toothless's children, was able to um, get was able to find him, and they both meet for the first time. Dot kind of has a bit of a lovable personality, as... Well, she just basically loves the human race, and she wants to do good by it. And then, this is where all the rest of Toothless's family comes in, and they are so freaking mad. Basically, um... What's happening with them is that, um... They are, um, well, they're a little bit angry that their daughter is uh, going out of the cave at times, and, and they are scared for her, as they, they want to make sure their daughter is staying safe, especially after these rumored boogeyman sighting, so, no, just a little reference guy, and then, so she keeps on disobeying her family, only to see the outside world. This makes Toothless get a little bit angry, as as he is, as all he just wants is his, for his own daughter's safety. You see what I'm getting at here? It's kind of like a one of those father and daughter type situation. Because kids at the time, you know, they were kind of, you know, kids look. Like, they're just kind of morons and. No offense to any watching this. Um, uh, so then, 
Hick then decides to go back to the Hidden World, because Dave, he just feels like he just wants to stay there. Now, I want to make it clear that in this storyline, Hiccup, he's a bit more serious than what he was, because he does kind of speak a bit dull, and, you know, like, it's just something that I really don't like about him in the movies. Um, we are then, in rough than to Shay, which we see him again, he's now had a ship that has been docked for him, called the Morrigan, and... It's basically a man of war, really, which is kind of the way you expect British man of war ships back in the 18th century. Yeah, I, I'm not that good with Viking history, sorry. Um, I don't think Viking history really matters. Um, then we are, um, so yeah, apparently Hiccup, he is learning about, um, Shay Cormac, like, he learns his name, learns the story, learns that he was actually, that he was an assassin, and that he's hunted dragons down, because they killed his family, while he was, you know, trying to take it easy. Now, Hiccup in this, in this bit, he doesn't really care about Shay, as he's more in the... Yeah, this guy, he's just a clown, like, why should I care about him? So then for Shay, when he confronts, um, when he confronts Hiccup for, like, the first time, they don't already go into action a lot. They just first kind of chat it out, really. And, well, it's kind of something I'm missing in movies, really. Just a nice chat with the hero and villain. Before they go into the whole fighting areas. So basically, Arno done. Oh, not Arno, uh, Hiccup is told to Shay that if the Vikings can, if the Vikings can go back to their normal ways, you know, being ruthless, murderous, bastards, then maybe, um, then definitely, um, they can get rid of the whole. They can get rid of uh, the dragons and it's kind of their main goal. Definitely one thing I want to make out clear though. Is that Shay doesn't enjoy being a bounty hunter. But he's only doing it for money. And not for like his own personal sort of vendetta sort of thing. We are then introduced to... Um, Hiccup then goes back to his father's statue as he's kind of missing him. He then also starts to hear Scarecrow's words, and it's a bit like Sauron's kind of commands, you know in Lord of the Ring? It's like, Scarecrow is basically meant to be like... Now Scarecrow, the reason why I'm mentoring him but not showing him, it's because I want to keep it a secret. Because you're not meant to know who the Scarecrow is meant to be. Which I will explain in another video, which is going to be another pre-written video. Uh, we then have... So basically, Shay, all he just wants is for the dragons to perish, so that this way, he can move on with his life and never have to worry about so many trolls again. Hiccup then refuses to... to do what he... what Shay asked for, because... He more thinks dragon so peaceful considering Hiccup is the one who was able to get them both to live together. She in this point is furious with, with Hiccup as he thinks he is betraying his own kind for for dragons. So she does grab out his sword and dagger and Hiccup grabs out his fire sword, which is kind of badass that you made. If you think so myself. Um But the two may duke it out a little bit. They doesn't really last long, but just enough. Like So then for Shay, he kinda goes for a bit of a darker route. So, so basically for Hiccup he he slices Shay 
he puts the sword on Shay's face and cuts it. When Shay takes off the hood, he is burnt to hell. And what I mean by that, half of his face is burnt off with scars. Shay then uh, jumps off to a leap of faith just to avoid any more action. Hickok then goes to his father's study to know what, what Shay is. It's revealed for Shay, he is actually... Well, you see with Shay, he's meant to be a mysterious man, like, which part of his past is true? Was he an assassin? Was he a Templar? Then, it is revealed <laughs> that Shay is actually a mercenary. And that he's working for an empire. What, what empire is this meant to be? It will be revealed. We then cut to Shay as he is trying to contact someone. On his own ship in his captain's cabin. He then bows to greet his masters. As it is revealed to be. <laughs> then a peacock comes out. Very, very damaged, as it is revealed to be Lord Shen. Yep, Lord Shen, baby. Um, Shen is absolutely disappointed with Shay for being, for getting half his face cut it off. But then he see, but then a few other villains from other DreamWorks movies, mostly Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, and Shrek villain. And Rising of Guardians as well. They all join the meeting as well. That is until the Scarecrow's voice is heard. Now he doesn't show himself. Because he doesn't want to. But what he does do. Is that he. Is very. Very scary. As he never shows his face to the crowd. Then. We cut back to. Toothless trying to. Talk to his kid about not going out. Hiccup. Basically, for Toothless and Hiccup, they're in a situation like... But let's say there was a story which I should have done, when we more explained Shay's backstory. Now, if we were learning it through Hiccup's perspective, and we had... And he was going to kill Shay, we would be more like, him, Okay, we get Shay, we get what he's doing, but if you were learning this through Shay's perspective, you'll be like, uh, why are we killing him? Like, you know... It just makes it more emotional, like, when they basically have the final battle, which will be kind of cool, which is, basically, all the dragons, so, instead of going out like little bitches all the time, they decide to fight, so, kind of like in How to Train a Dragon too. which is the only time I'm glad dragons do not go out like little bitches, because they kind of did in the other two movies. Um... So, Hiccup eventually confronts Shay in his captain's cabin, in his armour, really, as well. As for Shay, he is very angry with what, where he has been distreated and all. So, Hiccup and Shay basically have a sword fight hand-to-hand -hand with, basically, Toothless and Luna, like, send fires to the ship. While the kids, being little menaces like they, like they are, they kind of jump around with fireworks and also blow up the ship. Well, Hiccup is uh, juking out with Shay uh, on, on their ship. So, uh, Shay then starts to have visions of, of the Scarecrow himself. Hiccup then slices his sword right through into Shay's stomach and then everyone stops. They are surprised Shay has been defeated. The one man who took down an entire uh, gang. The one man who was able who was able to take down three billion ships in a time was defeated. Shay eventually confesses. Now, most of like in the Assassin's Creed games when at the coming target, they have that little confession. We're going to have something similar to that in here. Shay and Hiccup have a little talk. Now, even though Hiccup disagreed with everything Shay have done, then, well, 
gay, um, well, you know, Hiccup's a Viking, Shay's a mercenary. Hiccup knew Shay had to die because mercenaries are not a good thing. So, not judging by, oh, I don't know. So, um, Shay does pass away. He does fall into the water, which is kind of one of the weakest deaths. I know, a bit disappointing. Um, Hiccup, but is a little bit stunned by Shay's words, which he said, you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. The cameraman pulls on the dragon that's going to celebrate their victory one last time. Shane's body is going to be recovered out of the ocean by, by a bunch of Viking civilians. Hiccup in secret sea that actually burns Shane's body as a bit of a secret funeral, as he was Specs Shay for he understand why he wanted to kill the dragons, but because they killed his family. But just we just gotta remember who side we're on. We're on the hero side. Now we eventually have a bit of a dance scene between Hiccup and Astrid. Oh, the dragons. No, Hiccup and Luna decide to stay with Hiccup. Well, Toothless and Luna decide to stay with Hiccup. Sorry about that. And then, what they do next is when they. <laughs> they kiss and they also have to dance, which is. I never knew what money. I'm sorry, I want to throw a little bit of a nod to the third film. We then pull out and then we cut to the crabs. Uh, now, as for our main credit scene, we are going. Well, it's gonna be more of a speech that I've made that I'll let you lot listen to. This was meant to be something from Assassin's Creed 3, but I'll let you hear it. So, take a look for yourself, and I'll come back for the post credit scene. My father left those for me. Mother, father, I am sorry. I have failed you both. I made a promise to protect our people. I thought, I thought if I could stop the Templars, if I could keep the revolution free from their influence, that those I supported would do what was right. They did, I suppose, do what was right. What was right for them. As for you, Father, I thought I might unite us, that we would forget the past and forge a better future. In time, I believed you could be made to see the world as I did, to understand, but it was just a dream. This too, I should have known. Were we not meant to live in peace then? Is that it? Are we born to argue, to fight? so many voices, each demanding something else. It has been hard at times, but never harder than today, to see all I worked for, perverted, discarded, forgotten. You would say I have described the whole of history, Father. Are you smiling then, hoping I might speak the words you long to hear, to validate you, to say that all along you were right? I will not. Even now, faced as I am with the truth of your cold words, I refuse, because I believe things can still change. I may never succeed. The assassins may struggle another thousand years in vain, but we will not stop. Compromise. That is what everyone has insisted upon. And so I have learned it. But differently than most, I think. I realize now that it will take time, that the road ahead is long and shrouded in darkness. It is a road that will not always take me where I wish to go, and I doubt I will live to see its end. But I will travel down it nonetheless. For at my side walks hope. In the face of all that insists, I turn back, I carry on. This, this.
This is my compromise. So now we're gonna have the post credit scene. Now, I'm just gonna end the video after the post credit scene. So I'll see you a lot later. Goodbye and don't shit yourself while you're watching this, okay? Please, thank you. the street from the house that Jeff and his family moved into. It was Jeff, his brother Lou, and his parents. But not long after he got there, there was a uh, an incident involving three bullies. There was a fight. When I heard the screams coming from the front yard, I, I came running. Two of the bullies were on the ground. They had been beaten to death. Lou, Jeff's brother, was laying face down in a pool of his own blood after having his head caved in with a brick. And Jeff was rolling around on the ground, half set on fire, with the last bully standing over him beating his face with a brick. Every night, I lay awake in bed, hoping, wishing, I could go back and let Jeff burn. Because what he became after that day is not human. A monster. He killed my son. My wife. I barely made it out of my house alive. It's been seven fucking years. I've changed my name. I've changed cities, states. And every night, I hear the tapping at the glass. The cackling outside my window. And I know I'll see him again, standing in my doorway. He'll come up to me, and he'll shove that cold knife into my heart and whisper, Go to